The Gahagan Nature Preserve has peaceful hiking trails amongst mature white and red pine forest and cedar swamp. This is an area working to protect habitat and wildlife forever. The preserve is open to the public from dawn until dusk. One trail is paved and wheelchair accessible. Silverman, a volunteer at the park, took us on a guided trip. Margaret Gahagan's home, okay. which is now used for our educational programs. Oh, uh, very good. And we also have summer camp here and uh, students take field trips out here. Marguerite was a newspaper reporter who started a publication called Northwoods Call, a newspaper dedicated to conservation and natural resource issues. Much of her writing and composition was done right here at her cabin in the woods. It's an interpretive area, so there okay. are places to stop and you can read about various habitat issues and things like that. After her death, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources donated 40 additional acres and an additional nine acres was purchased. This makes up the 59-acre nature preserve. The property consists of mature white and red pine forest and cedar swamp. A small stream forms on the property, which becomes Tank Creek. Now we talked about it being an interpretive trail, and these are the kind of signs that you're going right. to have out here on the trail. Then. Right, right. And basically, uh, then they can take this and look into the woods and, and maybe uh, pick out some of the, in Absolutely. this case, some of the plants that are out here. Absolutely. We have treasure hunts for the kids to find different things. It's the, uh, the tall pines, uh, some of those pines are two, three hundred years old. Wow. They're one of the few pines that weren't cut down by loggers who came in the 1800s. And uh, they used to determine the location of these kinds of pines by listening to the wind because the, it makes a distinct wind sound when it passes through no these, these kinds of pounds. So, so whispering pines were things that uh, skilled people listened for and they'd find a whole track and cut them down, float them down the rivers and then transport it around the Great Lakes. There was more value in lumber taken out of Michigan than there was gold taken out of California.